today's topic is viruses though viruses are too small to be seen by a naked eye or a light microscope in this video i am going to discuss about its structure types replication classification and some harmful and beneficial viruses so let's begin the topic Viruses are a very small non-cellular parasite of cells. Its genome which is composed of either DNA or RNA and is enclosed in a protein coat. So a question may come in our mind that are viruses living or non-living? We can say that outside host they form a crystal structure but inside a host they are living structure inside a host they can replicate evolve and adapt to particular host environment and they can take part in ecological niches also so however they are non-living infectious entities and that can be said at best so we can say that viruses are simple non-cellular entities consisting of one or more molecules of either dna or rna which is enclosed in a coat of protein they can reproduce only within living cell and are obligate intracellular parasite so they are smaller than prokaryotic cell ranging in between 0.01 to 0.4 micrometer a fully assembled infectious virus is called a virion. The main function of the virion is to deliver its DNA or RNA genome inside the host cell so that the genome can be expressed or transcribed or translated by the host cell. So each viral species has a very limited host range that is it can reproduce only in small group of closely related species. Next is about its types. It can be helical, polyhedral, spherical or complex structure. It's about its structure. The structure of virion are very diverse, varying widely in range, shape and chemical composition. All viruses have a nucleocapsid which is composed of nucleic acid and is surrounded by a protein capsid. A protein code which function as a shell to protect the viral genome from nucleases and which during infection attaches the virion to specific receptor which is exposed on the prospective host cell. Capsids are formed as single or double protein shell and consist of only one or a few structural protein species. The protein used to build the capsid are called capsomeres. The nucleic acid together with the capsid forms the nucleocapsid. Some viruses have a membranous envelope that lies outside the nucleocapsid. Those virions having an envelope are called enveloped viruses, whereas those lacking an envelope are called naked viruses or non-enveloped viruses. In enveloped viruses, the nucleocapsid is surrounded by a lipid bilayer and glycoprotein which is derived from the modified host cell membrane and in case of envelope viruses often exhibit a fringe of glycoprotein spikes also called peplomars. In viruses that acquire their envelope by budding through the plasma membrane or another intracellular cell membrane. Next is about viral genome. They are smaller in size. The largest known viral genome that of bacteriophage G that is 670 kilobase pair. The genome of the virus may consist of DNA or RNA which may be single stranded or double stranded, linear or circular. Single stranded RNA genome can be either plus stand or a minus sense. Plus sense RNA serve as a mRNA and translated to the host cell whereas minus sense RNA act as a template for the synthesis of mRNA. An RNA molecule that is plus sense in some region and minus sense in other region and is referred to as MB sense. Based on their organization and packing of viral genome, viruses can be classified into three categories that is monoparted, segmented and multiparted viruses. 
Monoparted viruses have a single non-segmented nucleic acid molecule present in single virus particle. Next is about segmented viruses. These are divided into two or more nucleic acid segments that are all present together in a single virus particle. There may be as many as 10 to 12 segments in a single viral particle. Next is about multiparted viruses. It is also called multi-component, multi-particle or multi-compartment virus. So, their genome is divided into two or more nucleic acid segments just as the segmented type. But, these segments are each packed into separate virus particle. That is, double standard DNA viruses are exclusively monoparted, whereas their genome is never segmented or multiparted. Single standard DNA viruses are either mono or multiparted. There are no segmented single standard viruses. So, positive single standard RNA viruses are mostly mono or multiparted and negative single standard RNA viruses are mostly monoparted or segmented. Next is about its classification. Virus classification is the process of naming viruses and place them into a taxonomic system much like the classification system which is used for cellular organism. Virus classification is the subject of ongoing debate and proposals. This is mainly due to the pseudo-living nature of viruses, which is to say they are non-living particles with some chemical characteristics similar to those of life. As such, they do not fit neatly into the established biological classification system which is placed for cellular organism. So, for viral classification, Baltimore classification is the only classification system that places viruses into one of seven groups depending on a combination of their nucleic acid that is DNA or RNA and standardness or sense or antisense and method of replication. So, it was named after the David Baltimore and Nobel Prize winning biologist. These groups are designated by Roman numerals and discriminate viruses depending on their mode of replication and genome type. The Baltimore classification of viruses is based on the mechanism of mRNA production. Viruses must generate mRNAs from their genomes to produce proteins and replicate themselves. But different mechanisms are also used to achieve this in each virus family. Viral genomes may be single standard or double standard or may be RNA or DNA may or may not use reverse transcriptase. In addition, single standard RNA viruses may be either plus sense or antisense. This classification placed viruses into seven group. First one is double standard DNA viruses. For example, adenoviruses, herpes viruses or pox viruses. Next one is single standard DNA viruses. Example of this group is parvoviruses. Third one is double standard RNA viruses. Example of this group is Rio viruses. Fourth one is positive single standard RNA viruses or plus stand or sense RNA. Example is coronavirus, P coronavirus or Toga viruses. Fifth one is negative single standard RNA viruses that is negative sense or antisense RNA. Example of this is orthomyxoviruses or rhabdoviruses. Sixth one is single standard reverse transcriptase viruses that is plus stand or sense RNA with DNA intermediate in life cycle. For example retroviruses. And seventh one is double standard DNA reverse transcriptase viruses that is DNA with RNA intermediate in life cycle. Example of this group is Hepatna viruses. So this is about the Baltimore classification.
Next is about replication cycle. Viral population do not grow through cell division because they are acellular. Instead, they use the machinery and metabolism of a host cell to produce multiple copies of themselves and they assemble to the cell. When infected, the host cell is forced to rapidly produce thousands of copies of the original viruses. For the process of the life cycle, they have six basic stages in their life cycle. First one is attachment. It is a specific binding between viral capsid protein and a specific receptor on the host cellular surface. This specificity determines the host range and the type of host cell of a virus. Next one is penetration or viral entry which follows attachment. Virion enters the host cell through receptor mediated endocytosis or membrane fusion. The infection of plants and fungal cell is different from that of animal cell. Plant cell have a rigid cell wall of cellulose and fungi on of chitin. So, most viruses can get inside this cell only after trauma to the cell wall. Next one is uncoating. It is a process in which the viral capsid is removed. This may be degraded by viral enzyme or host enzyme or by simple dissociation. The end result is the releasing of the viral genomic nucleic acid. And then replication of viruses involves primarily multiplication of the genome. Replication involves the synthesis of viral messenger RNA from the early genes, viral protein synthesis and possible assembly of viral proteins. Then viral genome replication which is mediated by early or regulatory protein expression. This may be followed for complex viruses which has larger genome. Next one is assembly which is followed the structural mediated self assembly of the virus particle. Some modification of the proteins often occur in this step. So next step is release. Here viruses are released from the host cell by lysis, a process that kills the cell by blasting its membrane and cell wall if present. It is the feature of many bacterial and some animal viruses. Some viruses undergo lytic cycle or some in lysogenic cycle. At that time, the viral genome is then known as provirus or in case of bacteriophages, it is known as prophas. When the host divides, the viral genome is also replicated. The viral genome is mostly silent within the host. At some point, the provirus or prophas may give rise to the active viruses which may destroy the host cell. So, the steps of viral replication is first one is recognition of the target cell. Second one is attachment of the virus particle to the cell surface. Third one is penetration into the host cell. Fourth one is uncoating of the virus of the outer layer and keeps it. Fifth one is biosynthesis. In this step, transcription of the mRNA from viral nucleic acid takes place, translation of mRNA into early protein, replication of viral nucleic acid and then synthesis of late protein. And then sixth step is assembly of viruses in the nucleus or cytoplasm. Seventh step is budding of enveloped viruses. And the eighth one is release of viruses. So, these are the steps of viral replication. One is about viral genetics. Viruses are applicate intracellular pathogens that we all know. They replicate only in a living host cell. Viruses like other living beings obey the law of genetics. The viruses shows variation in their genomic characteristics by the principle of two methods that is mutation and recombination. Next. Non-genetic interaction between viral gene produces takes place in the following four ways that is complementation, phenotypic mixing, genotypic mixing and interference. It is about some viruses which are studied because they are used for current or potential applications. 
For example, first typing of bacteria. Some groups of bacteria such as Salmonella species are classified into stains on the basis of their spectrum of fast to which they are susceptible. Next one is source of enzyme. A number of enzymes used in molecular biology are virus enzyme. Next one is due to pesticides. Some insect pests are controlled with Vocalu viruses and Myxoma viruses has been used to control rabies. Next one is about antibacterial agents. In the mid 20th century, fuzzes were used to treat some bacterial infection of humans. Interest warned in the discovery of the antibiotics but has been renowned with the emergence of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. Next is about anti-cancer agents, genetically modified strains of the viruses such as herpes simplex virus and vaccinia viruses are being investigated for the treatment of cancer. These strains has been modified so that they are able to infect and destroy specific tumor cell but are unable to infect human cell. Next one is about the gene vector for protein production. Here, viruses such as certain vocaloviruses and adenoviruses are used as a vector to take genes into animal cells which is growing in culture. This technology can be used to insert into the cell genes encoding useful proteins such as vaccine component and the cells can then be used for mass production of the proteins. Next one is for gene vector for treatment of genetic diseases. Children with CMBR combined immunodeficiency has been successfully treated by using retroviruses as a vector to introduce into their stem cell a non-muted copy of the muted gene which is responsible for the disease. These are some examples of the helpful viruses. Next, why we want to study viruses? Because it is important agent for many human diseases ranging from the common cold to the rabies and also play a role in the development of several types of cancer as well as causing individuals to suffer virus diseases can also affect the well-being of societies. For example, smallpox has a great impact in the past and AIDS is having a great impact today. Therefore, it is required to understand the nature of viruses, how they replicate and how they cause several diseases. Nowadays, there is a big example of this COVID. So, this knowledge permits the development of effective means for prevention, diagnosis and treatment of virus diseases through the production of vaccines, diagnostic reagents and techniques and antiviral drugs. These medical applications therefore constitute major aspects of the society of virology. Whereas veterinary virology and plant virology are also important because of the economic impact of the many viruses that causes disease in domestic animals and crop plants. For example, foot and mouth disease viruses and rice yellow mortal viruses are just two examples. In another area where viruses can cause economic damages. Whereas in the dairy industry where fuzzes can infect the lactic acid bacteria that are responsible for the fermentation that produces cheese, yogurt and other milk product. Next, most of the basic knowledge of molecular biology, cell biology and cancer has been derived from the studies with viruses. Here are few examples. A famous experiment which is carried out by Alfred Hesse and Martha Chazzy and was published in 1952 used FAST-T2 and E. coli to provide strong evidence that genes are composed of DNA. Next, the first enhancer to be characterized were in the genes of Simon virus 40 that is SB40. Next, the first transcription factor to be characterized was the transplantation antigen of SB40. Next, 
the first nuclear localization signal of a protein was also first identified in the tnt gene of sb40 introns were discovered during the studies of adenovirus transcription in this way it has many role such as the role of the cap structure at the 5 dash end of the eukaryotic messenger rna were also discovered during the studies with vaccinia viruses and the rio viruses next The first internal ribosomal entry site to the discovered was found in the RNA of polio viruses. Next, the first RNA pseudo not to be discovered was that in the genome of the turnip yellow mosey virus. So these are some example of the helpful viruses. So this is all for today. In this topic I have tried to describe about the virus and its structure, Baltimore classification and why it is important for us and why it is nowadays a research topic. So thank you for watching this.